Today's video, we're going to talk about the round lashing from the Boy Scout book. My name is Brian, and you're watching Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. Thanks for joining me. As I said, this video is going to be another in the lashing series from the Boy Scout book again. We're going to talk about how to tie a round lashing. A round lashing is really useful if you need to tie two poles together to make a longer pole. I'm going to put this together on the picnic table just so it's, for clarity it's easier to see than trying to do it in the grounds full of leaves right now. Before we get started, I just want to show you. I've got a pole here that's about maybe five, six or five, seven, and I've got another one here that's maybe about nine feet. So I'm going to try to tie these two together to make a taller pole. So that's, I just want to kind of give you an idea of where we're at because you won't be able to see all that once we get on the table. Okay, so as you can see, we've got two poles laid next to each other. And that's going to give us about uh, three foot additional length here. And another thing I just want to show you before we do that is you want to make sure you've got enough of a distance here of overlap here because you're going to basically tie a lashing here and here so you don't have a pivot effect. So if you only tie one lashing anywhere, then you're going to have a little bit of a pivot effect here. If you tie it in two places here and here, then, then they're supporting each other. So you want to make sure you have enough of overlap. This is about two feet, which is probably going to be enough. We'll check it out. Also, one thing you want to look at is you want to make sure that if as much as possible you try to orient these things so that the you know you're going to find a spot where at least at the, at the where your lashing is going to be that the, that the poles are really close together and that may mean you need to do a little twisting and turning of both the poles until you find that perfect spot but this looks like pretty good here we can put one here maybe one here and they're pretty close together so okay so we're going to tie one i'm going to do one lashing here I'll show you on one end of the overlap and and i'll they're going to be the same on both ends so i'll just go ahead and show you the other end um, after it's finished. So first thing we want to do is get our clove hitch tied and instead of tying a clove hitch on one of the poles like we do in some lashings we're going to tie it around both of them at the same time. So just bring your, your, your running end under, go ahead and loop it over, actually we'll loop it over on this side and hold it in place, come back up under itself to make your clove hitch. Okay and we're going to make it, leave a little bit of a tag in but not a lot and then just bring this thing tight bring your X together, bring it tight. Now it's not going to snug up as much as well as a clove hitch would on a single pole because it's got a lot of slack in here. But, but what you want is just keep enough tension on it so it'll hold itself. And just start wrapping this thing. And you want to wrap it seven or eight times. And there's no frapping. You want to make it as tight as you can. Pull these wraps super, super, super tight. And you're just going to do all the way down. So I'm not going to make you watch all that because <coughs> it's going to take me a while. I got a little bit of a long rope here and I'm trying to keep them really tight but the, but that's the that's the key is just keep them pulled really really tight the whole time you bring them around keep the tension on with your other hand while you're pulling it around I want to pause this and get back to you when it's when we're ready to finish so we got 12 wraps on it I want to tie a clove hitch to finish this thing so just give yourself a little bit of room kind of break it to the side there just so you and I like to hold this with my thumb or finger just to keep from losing the tension on these wraps and wrap this around okay and as, as you know in a clove hitch you're going to come across the top make an X and then you're going to come back around and basically go back up through the one you just made. Okay, so on the finishing clove hitch is always a little different. But you're going to want to go under, back under the top one again. So, and then uh, keep my tension on it. Now I've got my finger on this part. Now I'll hold my tension. I'm just going to poke this under here in the gap between. The, the tension is key to this, this kind of knot. It's, and then we're going to pull everything tight and snug it up as we go, holding it tight. So snug up all, all these, these bindings together, and really, really tight. And what I like to do myself is do it again. Another clove hitch, just to kind of back it up because it's, it's definitely, this is not the optimal conditions to put a clove hitch in because you got so much slack here between the poles. It just doesn't hold as well as a clove hitch does on a single pole. So we're going to double it up and kind of back it up. You can see it's already trying to get loose here. And let's try to put the knot on the end here where to kind of bind. It's got a good firm backing to bind itself against. So we got one. Now you can see though, with just one, it still has a tendency. This thing can just kind of like move a lot, right? See it? Can you see it moving? Yeah, okay. So we're going to go ahead and tie the other, exactly the same thing on the other end here and get back to you. Okay, so we got both the round lashings done now. Got one on this end, 
one on this end. Just tied up my little extra in a kind of a bundle here. Got it hanging because I really don't want to cut my paracord just to make this video. And pretty solid actually. Well, so I'm going to cut this thing back to a long view, let you see just how strong this thing is. Okay, so got our uh, lashing right here. You can see it's around lashing and pretty strong, but I'm going to go ahead and bang this thing back here on the tree and let you see, okay? Okay, sorry about the uh, dazed and confused look there for a minute. I'm in a state park and I'm parked down here at a picnic table. I'm banging on a tree with these two poles tied together. This lady pulls up, apparently she's a jogger, just sits in her car. So I tried the old Magnus Anderson angry eyes staring at her, but it didn't seem to make a difference. So uh, anyway, uh, there's no telling what she thought about me. I'm banging this tree with a stick tied together. So anyway, uh, it's part of the joys of having a YouTube channel. So sorry for rambling. Let's get back to the uh, lashings. So anyway, um, I hope you can see that this thing is, I mean, it, just a little bit of paracord, a couple things, and it really does create a very, very, very strong, strong way of, of, of extending or tying two sticks together to make them longer. And I can't even get back far enough to get this in the camera, but this thing is probably, it's close to like, it's just like 15 feet tall now, and be a great flagpole. If you need a longer pole for whatever reason, uh, this is a really good way of doing it. So again, that's the round lashing from the Boy Scout book. I hope this has been helpful. As always, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for clicking that thumbs up right down below. Let Google know you like outdoor videos. I really appreciate it. If you want to support this channel, uh, please check out the Amazon links below. If you like to shop on Amazon, you can do so and help support this channel at the same time. Don't forget my website at survivalonpurpose.com, social media and all that stuff. I just really appreciate it. Once again, my name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident. So be prepared. See you next time.